is Dan, and I am back from my trip to PAX South. It was pretty good this year. A lot of it was more condensed, as you can see around here, compared to last year. But we had a lot of big names arrive, and I was glad to once again engage with these companies. Nintendo was there for the first time, and they were debuting their new console, the Nintendo Switch. It was the first time I got to get a good look at it before its release in March. First game I saw that was being showcased was Splatoon 2, which I'm looking forward to during its release later on this year. I'll probably pick it up when it comes out. I'm not sure if it'll be day one, but I'll decide as the time becomes closer. And so far, I do like what I see. I'm still enjoying Splatoon on the Wii U. However, I'm kind of plateauing on there. I can't really skill up anymore. So I'm looking forward to what Splatoon 2 has to offer, especially the main story. I want to see what happens with Callie since Marie was the only one showcased in the trailer. It's good that they're giving you more options to use in battle. What I really like is the jetpack system that allows you to reach greater heights or give you anywhere high ground against an opponent. I'm sure they haven't showcased everything, but that makes it even more anticipated for its release because I'm sure there are going to be more things coming out to observe in battle. I was thinking of getting inside the Nintendo booth, but the line was circling the booth multiple times and it would probably be at least an hour or two wait before I could even get close to getting in. So the most I could do was record really close. After examining Splatoon 2 for the first time, I went around the back and I saw that there was a ARMS Nintendo Switch game tournament taking place. And while I was observing it, and I saw that the audience was heavily engaged in it, there was even this little kid who was undefeated playing against Nintendo employees. So I went ahead and started recording, and this is what I caught. <laughs> kid whooped all of them and I was looking at more of what was happening around that area since it was the first time I was seeing the back of the whole entire Nintendo booth 
and I saw that there was tablet setup of the Nintendo Switch as well as the TV mode on the other side of the tournament. They were allowing people to play older games using the Nintendo Switch such as Mario Kart and among others. That was the first time I saw the Nintendo Switch controller being used for Mario Kart and I was like wow like I wonder if it plays better than the Wii U's controller because they have a bit of motion control in it but I don't know how much and I was doing a size comparison with my hand and it looks like I could actually wrap my entire hand around the controller. Like they're that small I didn't really get to try it out but from what I've heard it's doable especially the blue end is easier to use than the red one because the red one's control stick is kind of in the center. After that I saw there was a line for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The new Zelda game that's going to be coming out as a launch title for the Nintendo Switch. And I heard that there's going to be some differences between the Wii U version and the Switch version. The Switch version is going to be at a higher resolution than the Wii U. I myself might pick up both just to like and tell the difference between the between the two versions firsthand. And as I was standing next to and observing the area around Zelda Breath of the Wild, I saw that there were more mini games taking place next to it. Rooster Teeth was also there. Good job, man. I ran into Austin from Screw Attack, who I had met last year at Dallas Fan Expo. And we got to be reacquainted since this was our second meeting. I had asked him about how things are going at Screw Attack, as well as Rooster Teeth, since Screw Attack and Rooster Teeth are now kind of merging said there still is an ongoing process. We played a game together and talked about Rooster Teeth as well. After Rooster Teeth, I went ahead and looked at Tiny Build, which was kind of across a ways from where it was located. And I saw, of course, the Hello Neighbor billboard, and as well as a bunch of other Nintendo 3DS indie games. And I remember I'd seen that on the eShop, but I wasn't quite sure what it was about. I might check it out later on. And speaking of checking out, I saw what other people were playing, and there was this other indie game made by them that kind of piqued my interest, which inquired the use of teleportation while trying to get around guards. And you, of course, you gotta make sure you don't get obliterated by them, and that I think the objective is to quite possibly take them out or avoid them. I wasn't quite sure, but you can easily get overwhelmed and they can destroy walls, as you can probably see. Just mass teleporting and mass teleporting, and um, I guess you can take them out, but uh, it looks really difficult. I'll probably give it a shot when I have the chance. Now comes the game that everyone is talking about at this booth, Hello Neighbor. It's still in the alpha stage, so they only have that available, they're still working on the full game, at least the last time I heard. And I have yet to try it out, so while I was there, I actually did get to try it out. It is strangely addicting, and there's always more to explore and to... It's the progress. It's the progress that keeps you wanting to keep playing it over and over again. And while I was there, I did get a chance to look around my surroundings, and I did see that there were multiple setups of the game as well as wall decorations. Look at here, they have the interior of the neighbor's house, and on the outside is even more elaborate art pieces from the game, which I liked. I just had to go out there and take shots of it with my camera. Even on the corner, there were some really good ones. I really hope that there's even more promotional art. 
and next to it is the Capcom booth, which has Resident Evil 7 promoted on the one half of the booth, the giant house. When I went and asked them, they said that in each door along the wall is a VR booth to try out the Resident Evil 7 PlayStation VR experience. You had to purchase a ticket to get in line, and it goes from right to left, and you just have to wait until your turn is called. And while I was there, I also got to talk to a friend of mine, Yuri, from Capcom Unity. He's a Capcom USA employee. We got reacquainted, and that was our second meeting. It would have went well to talk about how we were doing and all that stuff. I also checked they brought back the Capcom store. I went and looked at what they had, and a lot of new merchandise was there, some that I don't remember seeing last year. I did get the chance to look at some things I wanted. The art books were intrigued me the most, but they ranged from 45 to 60 US dollars. And I went ahead and picked up one, because they said that you can really only get these at conventions, and not online anymore. On the side of it is more of the interactive arcades, which is Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Street Fighter 5. But as you can see, people still play it. And way in the back corner is where they hold the Street Fighter 5 tournaments. And I'm watching them play, and it was quite interesting to see. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at it. Winning with throws. That's a good way to beat a turtle. And anyway, not too far from the Capcom booth was another booth I was kind of interested in. The Alienware booth. They had a massive PC setup for both multiplayer games as well as VR. And I wasn't quite sure what he was playing, but I was still intrigued to watch him. And here's what I saw. <laughs> enjoyed what I had to show you. In the meantime, here are some cosplay pictures I took. <laughs> 